thank you for joining this lesson. Uh, continue joining us. Continue joining us. As we have outlined, we're going to discuss on the uh, ankle properties of a circle. The ankle properties of a circle. We know very well that uh, the properties which govern angle properties in a circle are numerous. And that is what we're going to discuss. That is exactly what we will be discussing for the next one hour or so. So I request you cooperate. I request you cooperate in the next one hour or so. In the next one hour or so. We're going to be handling angle properties of a circle. You can share the link with a friend so that uh, at least more people can also join. Share with several friends. Share with several friends. So I'm going to first of all outline the angle properties themselves. After which we're going to see some questions. After which we're going to answer a few questions. So before handling the several questions around, I got several questions which we'll go through. I have numerous questions. I got uh, numerous questions. And before we look at them all, we're going to first of all analyze the anchor properties that govern circles and anchors. You can share with friends this uh, broadcast kindly. Yeah, share the broadcast with a friend. Then we get started now. We get started. I've said before I get to the questions, the first task is going to be analyzing all the angle properties right from book two to book three. Angle properties of a circle. Angle properties of a circle. Angle properties of a circle. There are several angle properties of a circle and once we outline all of them, we'll be in a position to until several questions uh the first one we can look at angles subtended by the same code i can see a few comments around uh marka jones is saying uh, you're doing an excellent work sir thank you so much uh you can share a comment on our work just uh, place a comment there drop a comment as we continue angles subtended by same code angles subtended by the same code by the same code at the circumference of a circle at the circumference of a circle remember if we do a circle here let me do a circle. I can pick a certain radius, then have a center O. Then I make a circle. Then I make a circle. Yes. This is uh, the center. The center O. Then now, whatever we call a chord is a line which joins two points on the circumference of the circle. For example, A, B is a chord a b is a chord uh malimu some of my friends here are saying you too fast please i'm sorry for that i'm sorry for that i'm sorry for that but i want to advise you people that uh, <clears throat> this this video can still be replayed later even after the live presentation you can still have the same lesson slowly as you pause as you ask questions in my inbox remember my number is 0704 153366 so you can ask your question through whatsapp on this number uh, don't call by now you might interrupt the program but uh, you can question 
any other time. So if a code like AB, for example, makes an echo at the circumference of this circle. So if I produce an echo supported by this code, uh, this is an angle at the circumference. We can have the angle as x, angle x, and we have the same, same code. If we happen to have the same, same code supporting another angle at the circumference, like an angle, we can call it y, then mathematically, when you measure this using a protractor, you conclude that the angle x is equivalent to the angle y and this has been proved for all codes in a circle that if they produce an angle at the circumference as long as it's a code producing several angles at the circumference then the given angles are going to be equal and this follows that if <coughs> angles subtended by the same code at the circumference of a circle are equal so we can conclude that they are equal. They are equal. If these are equal, it can also be concluded that conversely, equal codes subtend equal angles at the circumference. Equal codes subtend equal angles. Subtend equal angles at the circumference at the circumference equal codes subtend equal angles at the circumference that is property one we can go to another property another property we can look at the relationship between angle at the center of a circle and anchor at the circumference anchor at the circumference anchor at the circumference of a circle by the same chord by the same by the same chord let me do a circle so that I may elaborate what I'm saying. If I make a circle at this point, if I make a circle with a center O, with a center O, then I happen to have a chord the code in this case can be a code PQ. Code PQ. <clears throat> and we have uh, the code producing an angle at the circumference. PQ producing an angle at the circumference. So we can have this angle being named uh, angle R. Then uh, the same, same code PQ supports an angle at the center of the same, same circle at the center of the circle then we will have the angles compared again we will have the angles compared the angle at the center can be called the angle t when these angles are measured numerically you find that uh, there is a relationship between their sizes and the relationship is that when we take two we multiply by r we will get the size of the angle T. In other words, it can simply be concluded that the angle at the center of a circle is usually twice the angle at the circumference of the circle as long as they have been produced by the same code. So the angle at the center, the angle at the center, we say that is twice, is twice the angle at the circumference is twice the angle at the circumference as long as they have been produced by the same code the one at the center will be double 
the one at the circumference. Something else that has to be noted uh, is that ankle subtended by diameter, ankle subtended by diameter, angle subtended by diameter is 90 degrees is usually 90 degrees and actually this is an idea which supports the property number two discussed up there because we know that a, a diameter is a line which passes through the center of a circle through the center of a circle so if we make a circle here if we make a circle here uh -huh. We got a circle here. Then uh, this is a special cord which passes through the center. A special cord. We can have a diameter XY. This is a diameter. Then it happens that our diameter makes an angle at the circumference of this circle. Such that uh, using the diameter... We are supporting a certain angle at a point on the circumference. At a point on the circumference. Such that uh, now there is an angle there. Numerically, the value of this angle is usually 90 degrees. Without arguments, as long as it has been made by diameter, then it's equivalent to 90 degrees. This supports the idea above here, whereby we have said the angle at the center is twice that at the circumference since this is a diameter in this case it means at the center we have 180 degrees so it goes without saying that at the circumference it will produce a half and that is 90 therefore anchor at the circumference produced by diameter is equivalent to 90 degrees that is a constant it has to be understood let me go to some more properties some more properties uh, we can look at something we call a cyclic contralateral angles in a cyclic contralateral so we can have number four angles on a cyclic contralateral angles on a cyclic or in a cyclic quadrilateral quadrilateral Angles in a cyclic quadrilateral. Angles on a cyclic quadrilateral. It should be noted that a cyclic quadrilateral is a quadrilateral whose four vertices are touching the circumference of a circle. So a quadrilateral is basically a four-sided figure. And a four-sided figure will have uh, mainly will have mainly four vertices. So we are saying if the four vertices of a quadrilateral are touching the circumference of a circle, then such a quadrilateral will be called cyclic. And it has some properties as long as circles are involved. Therefore, this is the center. If we get a four-sided figure such that if this is a side and this is another side. This is another side. Then we got the last side here. It's four-sided. And all the vertices are touching the circumference of the circle. We can have it as A, B, C, D. So uh, we call it a cyclic quadrilateral A, B, C, D. In this cyclic quadrilateral, there are some principles or some properties which govern the angles in such a in such a figure. Therefore, we say the angle at B is opposite to the angle at D. The angle at A is opposite to the angle at C. Basically, because it's four-sided, the angles at the end of the day will add up to 360. But the opposite ones are usually supplementary. So we say opposite angles, opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral, 
in a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary are supplementary supplementary is to mean that they add up to 180 degrees for instance using the figure here we can say that the angle d plus the angle at b should give us 180 degrees they are opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral similarly the angle at c plus the angle at a should give us 180 degrees therefore that is something to be noted that is a property to be understood still while on a cyclic quadrilateral it should be understood that in case we produce a an an external angle remember the angles we've dealt with here are all internal but if we produce one of the lines such that there is an external line produced there is an external angle produced you see if we elongate the line da we're going to have an exterior angle here an exterior angle here which can be called a uh, angle x you can have it as angle x so we usually conclude that a uh, angle x plus the angle at a since they are on a straight line they add up to 180 and remember we had said that a plus c gives us 180 and we are also concluding that a plus x will also give us 180 then mathematically we can argue that the angle x is equivalent to the angle c reason being when both are added independently to angle a we will get 180 so this is to mean this is to mean that a uh, exterior angle exterior angle in a cyclic quadrilateral is equal exterior angle is equal to the interior opposite the interior opposite angle is equal to the interior opposite angle since the exterior angle together with the interior opposite they are added to the interior angle at this point to give us 180 similarly to the other point if we produce an angle at this end and we call the angle uh, probably angle y we produce angle y there you discover that angle y and the angle which we are calling d here the angle at d when added they should give us 180 due to the fact that they are on a straight line but we had also said that the angle d and the angle b are also giving us 180 so we can conclude without fear of contradicting ourselves that y and angle b are equal because both when added independently to d they will give us 180 degrees therefore the exterior angle produced in a cyclic quadrilateral is equal to the interior opposite angle to the interior opposite angle we can also conclude something else about angle properties we can have a number 5 we can have a number 5 uh, <clears throat> you know now we can get to what we call tangents and we can look at a uh, angle made by a chord mm -hmm. angle made by a tangent sorry a tangent and a tangent and a radius a tangent and a radius we usually say that this angle is equivalent to 90 degrees that angle is equivalent to 90 degrees so we can do a circle here to demonstrate whatever we say if we do a circle here we do a circle here Uh -huh. if we do a circle here if we do a circle here such that 
there is a tangent to the circle at a point. Let's say uh, that is a point on the circle. If we have a line which touches the circle at such a point, the line will be called a tangent. So if we draw a line touching the circle at that point, this line will be called a tangent to the circle at the given point. So this is a tangent to the circle. A tangent to the circle. Now with such a tangent, if for the circle we produce a radius to the tangent at the point of incidence to the circle at this point, this is a radius to the circle. So our argument is that a radius is usually perpendicular to a tangent because tangents can be as many as possible at different points of a circle and radii can be as many as possible at different points of the circle. What should be understood is that a radius and a tangent are perpendicular at the point of incidence of the tangent to the circle. That should be noted that a radius meets a tangent at 90 degrees. You can share this broadcast with a friend. I can see people are still joining. Please uh, continue sharing. I can see a gentleman here, my friend Colin Tsumwaya. Thank you so much. You're saying that uh, this is great. Keep up, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We can go to another property. And now we are winding up. Now we are winding up. Number six, as we wind up, we can look at uh, Enco. Enco made or Enco made by a chord in the alternate segment. In the alternate, in the alternate segment. If you happen to follow all these notes, if you happen to follow all these notes, then you start handling questions from anchor properties of a circle. I want to promise you, you will always be getting the questions. You will always get everything in such questions. Let me first of all end up with the summary. I'm talking about a, a tangent at a point. We can have a tangent at a point here. This is a tangent. This is a tangent. Uh -huh. Then now we can have a chord being incident to the tangent at the given point. So we can have a chord here. This is a chord. That is a chord. Now, if we happen, remember the chord is making an angle X here. The chord is now making an angle with the tangent. But if it happens that this chord produces an angle in the alternate segment, whatever we are calling alternate segment is, remember the chord is having a segment here and a major segment on the other side. So at the circumference of the major segment, if we happen to have an angle produced there by the same, same chord, by the same, same chord, such that the chord, the chord is making an angle with the tangent and the same, same chord is producing an angle in the alternate segment at a point here. This is X, we have Y here. Then numerically, if you measure these two angles, you will discover that the angle X is usually equivalent to the angle Y. And this can lead us into concluding that angle made by a chord and a tangent is equal to the angle produced by the same chord in the alternate segment. Kindly save my words. Kindly save my words. I'm saying... Angles made by a chord and a tangent are equal to the angles produced by the same chord in the alternate segment. So any of these can be provided so that you may find the other. Any of these can be provided so that you may find the other. So 
uh, remember the tips we've just outlined. Remember the tips we've just outlined. These are up to number six. Just uh, to go through them very fast for those who are joining late. We are saying the angles subtended by the same chord at the circumference of a circle are equal. Such angles are equal. We have a chord AB producing angle X and angle Y. X and Y will be equal because they have been produced by the chord AB. Again, if an angle is produced at the circumference and another one at the center by the same chord, then we usually say the angle at the center is twice the one at the circumference. So you need to multiply 2 by uh, R by 2 so that you may get the value of T. If this one is 70, this one becomes 35. Is this one if this one is equal to 50 degrees, this becomes 100 and such. Angles subtended by diameter, and we've said that uh, the diameter is a special chord which passes exactly at the center of a circle, and a diameter produces an angle which is equivalent to 90 degrees at the center of a circle, or the circumference of a circle. Angles in a cyclic quadrilateral, the opposite angles, opposite angles of cyclic quadrilaterals usually add up to 180 or rather they are supplementary angles they add up to 180 and if an exterior angle is produced that exterior angle will be equal to the interior opposite angle so if we produce an angle at this point the interior one is here now the opposite one so c and x are going to be equal if we extend this line to produce an exterior angle here y the interior angle will be d the opposite is B. So we are saying Y and B are going to be equal. And we said again that angles made by a tangent and a radius are 90. So a radius and a tangent are usually uh, perpendicular to one another. Angles made by a chord in the alternate segment. We've just finished up with this one by saying that if a chord makes an angle with a tangent, the chord will produce an equal angle in the alternate segment segment that said you can allow me now to check a few examples i believe you're going to cooperate and you're going to understand exactly what will be happening exactly what will be happening therefore we're given a question here i believe you're going to cooperate the figure below is a cyclic quadrilateral pqrs we had just discussed what a cyclic quadrilateral is and this is a four-sided figure whose vertices touch the circle the circle yeah the circumference of the circle pqr so p q r s all the vertices are touching the circle all the vertices are touching the circle as can be seen given that t r x is a tangent t r x is a tangent and o is the center of the circle o is the center of the circle and that p s x PSX is a straight line. Angles PRS, PRS, 50 degrees. So PRS, 50 degrees. So this is a 50 degrees, not included. We can have it fixed. 50 degrees. And angle QPR, QPR, equivalent to 30 as indicated. Mm -hmm. And code RS, equivalent to ps rs equivalent to ps aha uh -huh. we can find giving reasons in each case we can find angles s r x s r x the angle at this point this is the angle we're going to calculate so I request you be patient until we arrive at the value of that angle. Remember, we've been told that uh, PS and RS are equivalent. That means the angle at P and the angle at B are equivalent. Those are base angles. Those are base angles of what you call an isosceles triangle. They must be equal. So this is another 50. If this is 50, this will be also 50 this angle and this one at uh, this side and this one are equal therefore <clears throat> if the angle at p has been found now we can conclude using the last priority using the, the last pro property here which said that a tangent 
if with a code make an echo the code will produce an equal echo in the alternate segment then we can apply it in this case by saying now that rs is a code and it makes an echo with trx which is a tangent and the echo is unknown yet rs being a code produces a known echo of 50 then the echo left at this point will also be 50 the echo at this point will also be 50 the echo uh, the echo will be 50 degrees so this echo is going to be 50 degrees the reason is that it is echo made by chord and tangent it is the angle made by chord and tangent the angle made by chord and a tangent should be equivalent should be equivalent to the angle made by the chord in the opposite in the in the alternate segment as we have outlined so 50 it means a 50 had been left here the next is to find angle r x s r x s the anchor at this point the anchor at this point okay we can follow several approaches uh, for instance if we consider anchors in a triangle we have a p r x and we are having 50 and the angle here now becomes 100 so we can find the angle here by saying the angles in the triangle should add up to 180. So when I take 180 and I subtract all the other angles, 50 and 100, I should get the remaining angle, which is 30. The property applied here is angles in a triangle. Angles in a triangle. Angles in a triangle. So angles in a triangle should give us 180. And now that two of them are known, then the third one can be obtained without struggle. So we have 30 degrees. Something else that can be obtained, you know, we are we are ideally feeling the angles. We are ideally finding a known angle. So with 50 and 30, that gives us 80. That means for triangle SRX, we can have this one as 100 degrees. 100 degrees because we already have 50 and 30. So we'll get 180 degrees and again with 100 and this is a straight line the remaining angle here can be concluded to be 80 okay it is 80 for many reasons 80 because on a straight line with 100 it should give us 80 80 again because for this triangle here we have 50 and 50 giving us 100 so it has no alternative other than becoming 80 aha uh -huh. i can see sule uh, Sulumena Olewe, uh, keenly following Malimu. Thank you. Welcome so much. Invite a friend next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for following up with our lessons. We can go to the next, whereby we are finding the anchor PQR. 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 Now, in this case, we are going to apply another property. Remember, the angle at S has already been found as 80. And we should be aware that PQRS is a cyclic quadrilateral. So, the properties for cyclic quadrilaterals can now take effect. In that, the angle at S is opposite to the angle at Q. And what we want is the angle at Q. Therefore, we can say the two angles have to be supplementary. The angles are supposed to be supplementary. The angle, uh, the angle uh, PQR is going to be when we take 180 and we subtract 80, we're going to get 100 degrees. Opposite angles in a cyclic contralateral. The reason, opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral in a cyclic quadrilateral 
uh, Abraham Sila, you are such a blessing, Malimu. Great work. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Abraham Sila. Continue following. Okay, this is a 100 degrees. 100 degrees. Therefore, we can feel the angle. It's now 100. Mm -hmm. This can guide us to get a few other angles. Now that this is 100 and this is 30, we get 130. So for this triangle, we can conclude that this is 50 degrees. Yeah, that is 50 degrees. That is exactly 50 degrees. We can go to the next question. The next question, uh, which says to find the reflex angle QOR. QOR. With Q, then uh, O, then R. We need to produce the anchor ourselves because it has not been uh, produced. Therefore, we are having QOR. The angle is at this point. So this is the anchor we want to produce, the reflex one. So the outer angle here is what we want to find, is what we want to find. And we can do that. Uh, the first thing we're supposed to note is that uh, the code QR is producing an angle which is equivalent to 30 degrees. That means the same same code leaves an angle of 30 degrees at this point. Uh -huh. The same 30 could have been concluded otherwise because we have 50, 50, 50 giving us 150. So for this straight line, the remainder could still be 30 degrees. Now that the code QR is producing 30 degrees and it is also producing an angle at the center, the angle at the center should be double. Therefore, the angle QOR, which is at the center, is supposed to be 60 degrees. So QOR, the acute angle, is 60 degrees. So QOR uh, is equivalent to 30 by 2, giving us 60 degrees, giving us exactly 60 degrees. And now we were not finding the acute one. We want the reflex one. So we will have to take, as long as it's our angles at a given point, angles at a given point, we will have 360 minus 60 so that the reflex one takes 300 degrees. So the desired angle, which is reflex in this case, is going to be 300 degrees, 300 degrees. So those are the desired angles, but you can feel more than that. So thank you for following. Let us look at, at another question, at another question, which will apply the same, same concepts the same same concepts yes we got another question here <clears throat> we have another question here we're going to apply the same properties but i'm believing that now this one is going to be easier for us now that we have seen the properties and we have handled one of the examples somebody is asking me eugene is asking me if angle srx equals to 40 i encourage you to share the questions to the WhatsApp number so that we may handle them at a personal level 0704 153366. So this is the number you will forward such questions to. Okay, the question now begins. In the figure below, K, L, M, and N are points on the circumference of the circle center O. K, L, M and N. K, L, M and N are points on the circumference, on the circumference of the circle. Uh, therefore, <clears throat> we continue. The points K, O, M and P are on a straight line. K, O, M and P. K, O, M and P are points on a straight line. They are points on a straight line. Then we are told... Further that uh, PQ is a tangent at N. So PQ is a tangent at N. A tangent at N. 
then n call k o l k o l is equal to 30 130 degrees mm -hmm. n call m k n equals to 40 m k n equals to 40 degrees the angle here mm -hmm. now we're going to find the values of the following angles stating the reasons in each case the first anchor to be found is m l n m l n therefore the anchor m l n is the angle at this point that is the angle we're going to find and we state a reason for finding it so the anchor is produced by the code m n let me actually make the line here m n so that we may understand that mn is a code so mn is a code producing an anchor at the circumference which is equivalent to 40. now our question is finding the anchor mln the anchor at this point it means the angle is going to be equal therefore the anchor is going to be equal to 40 and the reason is anchors subtended by the same code and cost subtended by the same code as we had stated they are supposed to be equal therefore this is 40 that is a uh, 40 degrees that is 40 degrees we can pro proceed we are also finding angle o l n o l n the angle at this point the angle at this point yes and we are going to find it something we're supposed to understand is that ok and ol are them uh, are ready to the circle so they are equal because they are all to the center therefore if this is 130 and from 180 we remain with 50 so we divide 50 by 2 to get 25 degrees and also 25 degrees and something else we are supposed to understand is that as long as km passes through the center and is a straight line then it's a diameter and diameters produce what we call 90 degrees at the circumference so the whole angle klm equals to 90 degrees and we are having 25 and 40 so the remaining angle can be found because the whole of this is right angled therefore we can say the desired angle which is oln oln is going to be 90 minus 25 and 40. this is going to give us uh this is a 65 so from 90 we get 25 degrees 25 degrees this is a uh, anchor subtended by the reason anchor subtended by diameter anchor subtended angle subtended by diameter the angle is supposed to be 90 therefore we can find the missing angle there the next angle is l and p okay we've already found this 25 so we can fill it l and p l n p the bigger angle at this point l and p and it has to be understood that uh, ln is a chord and qp is a tangent when a chord meets a tangent and they make an angle such that the chord is also producing an angle at the alternate segment then we say the angle at the alternate segment is equal to the angle made by the chord and a tangent so the value of this angle is going to be the same as the value of this angle therefore the angle is going to be 65 so the value of this angle is 65 degrees this is an angle made by a chord and a chord and a tangent if a chord and a tangent 
make an angle. That angle is usually equivalent to the angle made by the same chord in the alternate segment. In the alternate segment. In the alternate segment. So we can continue. We have a angle MPQ. MPQ. So we're going to have that angle. This 65. MPQ. This is the angle we want to find. This is the angle we want to find. The angle at this corner. Therefore, we can uh, try to fill that angle. Uh, remember, we are having a chord KL making an angle of 130 degrees and the same chord KL is producing an angle at the circumference at this point. Therefore, the angle at the circumference is supposed to be a half the angle at the center. Therefore, this angle, if this is 130, this one should be half 65. Uh, 65 degrees. 65 degrees. Now that we have the angle there at 65 degrees, then we can find the missing angle at this point because we will have 65 and 65 at this corner. Then we have a 40 degrees angle here. So the only missing angle in KPN is going to be this one. Therefore, the angle is going to be when we take 180 and we subtract 65, 65, and 40, then we're going to have, uh, this is 65 plus 65 plus 40. So the remaining angle is only going to be 10 degrees. These are angles in a triangle. Angles in a triangle. They should add up to 180. And finally, angle K and Q. K and Q. K and Q. The angle here. Okay, this is a straight line and we are already having 65 and 65. So 65 and 65 are angles which are giving us 130. Therefore, the missing angle should be exactly 50 degrees. So we're going to have 180 minus 65 and 65 to give us exactly 50 degrees angles on a straight line. Angles on a straight line. There are several other reasons which can be used to conclude that the angle is 50. Because when we consider, uh, if we forgo this one, if we forgo the angles on a straight line and say the chord KN is producing an angle of 50 at this point because we have 25 and 25, that will be an angle of 50. So it should be leaving an angle of 50 here where there is a chord and the tangent. So a chord and a tangent should make an angle which is equal to the angle produced by the same chord in the alternate segment. During your own time, kindly solve following the same techniques uh, the question given here. You can screenshot on your phone or your gadget such that you can access the question later and solve it. So you can attempt this question and share your response in the WhatsApp number provided. Thank you for following. Subscribe and share. I'm done, sir.